Hello everyone, this is Alan from Technology Moments and welcome back to our videos, particularly this dedicated to security and how we can connect remotely to our workplace or to our home using a secure connection. Like you may have seen in the title, in this particular time, we're gonna use WireGuard, one of the most recently added to the graphical user interface of Unify devices. There are many ways in which your information can be compromised just by connecting to our data remotely, we're not gonna discuss that today. We're gonna watch creating the server creating the client and having access to remote resources. There was a time that just using remote desktop connection was enough for us to work securely from our remote location. Well, we all know that that may not longer be the case and those ports are subject of an infinite number of attacks nowadays. In many ways, bigger companies or even very small deployments needed to have access to their file servers, local intranets, access directly to your NAS, and for many reasons, many professionals need to back up immediately their files, videos, documents, or audios to their own private servers. Even gaining access to the internet through your VPN and make it look to the world as if you were in such remote location is one of the uses that many people can give to VPNs. For those and many more reasons, it is important today to use VPNs and we are creating this video today oriented for enthusiasts, beginners, and tech fans. It is important also to understand that one of the advantages of this type of connections is that you're gonna have the whole traffic encrypted from where you are right now to the gateway you are connecting. Right to the point, let's create the server first, for which we're gonna use this unified dream machine, magnificent unified gateway by the way. The example that you're gonna watch today can be configured basically in any unified gateway. Dream Machine SE, UDM Pro, Unified Dream Machine, Dream Router and such. Now let's go to creating the client. One of the advantages of using Unify to create your server is that you can actually connect remotely and configure it from the remote location where you're at. So let's go to the Dream Machine where we're gonna configure the server. Uh, we're gonna go right here to settings and we're gonna check first that we have the internet with the primary one. You're gonna check that in this connection you have a public IP address, like you can see right here, and then we can continue our VPN server creation. Let's remember that if you were gonna use an open VPN server, you needed to have a radius server running. You also needed to have a profile right here, and you needed to have right here users that were gonna connect remotely. Right here in VPN, we're gonna create the VPN server, as you can see right here, we already have two servers running in this Unified Dream Machine. We're gonna create a third one. The third one is gonna be created using WireGuard. We're gonna leave this name. As you can see right here, it already has created a private and public key. We already have a WAN associated to my connection and the port. Let's remember that this port is open automatically by the Unified Dream Machine. If you were gonna use, for example, Dynamic DNS, right here is where you're gonna write the, the FQDN of that host. We're not gonna use it. Different to OpenVPN, it doesn't use radius, we're gonna use it right here at the client and right here there are two important considerations. You can very quickly download the VPN configuration file using this QR code or just download it right here or you can add an additional layer of security using the pre-shared key. Then you can download the VPN configuration file. This configuration file you're gonna want to keep it in a safe place. Then click on add, you'll have client one. As many clients as you want also do the same. Once you have created all your clients, click on add. It is the easiest VPN server that you can create in any unified console. At this point, you'll be done. Something important to note is this. Let's take a look that once you have created the server, you cannot download nor watch the QR code to download the files. So you have to download the file immediately after creating the user. Now let's go to the client computers and set them up. By the way, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you'll be connected as if you were nearby. Let's go then to WireGuard.com, Installation, choose the operating system that you have, download the installation file, run it with default values and settings, just import the configuration file to the client computer, the one that we just created, right here, and you'll be ready to connect. As you can see right here, you can connect and disconnect very quickly. You're also gonna be able to find the status or the monitor in the taskbar, so you can very quickly check if you are connected or not. 
How am I gonna connect to the internet? Well, once connected from the remote location, having this IP address, this is the public IP address where I'm located right now, this is just an example, you'll be identified as if you were connecting from the main office. This means this other IP address. Now let's take a look at how the bandwidth is affected once connected. This is the speed at which I download here normally without any encryption. Once connected, I'll be downloading not only at the speed at which the upload of the main office has as a cap, but also it is gonna be affected due to the encryption. This one is the maximum bandwidth. Let's remember that this is something also critical when using, for example, OpenVPN. Okay, now let's get access to the remote resources. How can we have access to all those remote resources that we have? Well, we're gonna do it as if we were just sitting nearby. We're gonna be able to have access to IP, PBX servers, printers, file servers, web services, either for entertainment or for remote device configuration. Once connected, you're gonna be able to ping addresses in the remote location as if they were in your same physical network. Even remote desktop traffic is encrypted. People who use remote desktop to gain access to their own computers remotely are gonna benefit greatly. If for any reason you're trying to access a remote Windows server shares and you can't, even after connected, take a look at our video about which firewall exceptions have to be in place in order for you to have access to those shares from a remote subnet. Okay guys, once again thank you for watching, please remember that your huge support is just subscribing to our channel and liking this video, of course if you found it useful. See you next time.